now call the Leader of the Opposition, Rishi yeah. yeah. Well, Mr Speaker-elect, uh, I'm pleased to join the Prime Minister in welcoming you back to the Speaker's Chair. And can I also praise the wonderful speech from the Honourable Member for Lancaster and Wire? Yeah. Yeah. And can I start by congratulating the Prime Minister on his election victory? And as he takes on his formidable task, he and his family deserve the good wishes of all of us yeah. in this House. Yeah. Now, in our politics, we can argue vigorously as the Prime Minister and I did over the past six weeks, but still respect each other. And whatever disputes we may have in this Parliament, I know that everyone in this House will not lose sight of the fact that we are all motivated by our desire to serve our constituents, our country, and advance the principles that we honourably believe in. Yeah. And to every member, new and old, let me welcome them to their places and congratulate them on their results. <coughs> to be sent to this place by one's constituents is the greatest honour, privilege, and responsibility. I know every one of us will be trying to repay the trust placed in us, and I look forward to continuing to represent the interests of my own rural North Yorkshire constituents. One of the great aspects of our system is no matter how high you rise, you still have that constituency which keeps you grounded. And my advice to all members is to appreciate the role that you have every day that you have it. <laughs> and for those of us in my party, let me begin with a message to those who are no longer sitting behind me. I am sorry. We have lost too many diligent, community-spirited representatives whose wisdom and expertise will be missed in the debates and discussions ahead. It is important that after 14 years in government, the Conservative Party rebuilds. So now we will take up the crucial role of His Majesty's official opposition, professionally, effectively and humbly. And restoring trust begins by remembering that being here is an opportunity to do what those we serve expect of us. And in our case, that means holding the new government to account. Yeah. Can I congratulate the father of the House, the member for Gainsborough? My right honourable friend has given 41 years of remarkable, dedicated service to this House and his constituency. I know full well how ferociously my right honourable friend fights for the interests of his constituents, and I applaud him for that. My right honourable friend is also testament to the benefits of an early morning dip in the Serpentine. <laughs> and members may be interested to note that the Bottomleys have also had a bidding, big influence on my right honourable friend's career. It was in 1974 that my right honourable friend ran against Arthur Bottomley in Middlesbrough in his first effort to enter this place. And today he takes over from Sir Peter, who will be missed. Yeah. And can I also congratulate the new mother of the House, the member for Hackney North and Stoke Newington. We have our differences on policy, but no one can deny the Right Honourable Lady's important role in this House and the inspiration for so many young women of colour that she has provided. Yeah. The Right Honourable Lady is true in every sense of the word, a trailblazer. Yeah. Yeah. And can I join with you, Mr Speaker-elect, to thank House staff for their hard work in welcoming our new colleagues to this House and their service over the coming Parliament. And finally, may I congratulate you, Mr Speaker-elect. When you first ascended to the Speaker's chair, you did so with a healthy majority, and that was testament to your wide appeal and the confidence in which this House places in you and your judgments. The last Conservative Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Major, who spoke from these opposition benches, said about the role of the Speaker, the job specification is pretty daunting. The patience of Job and the wisdom of Solomon are only the basic requirements. <laughs> we demand also impartiality, independence and fairness. Well, Mr Speaker-elect, you have shown over the past four and a half years how to protect that careful balance. The last few years in this House have been at times difficult, and you, sir, have always brought this House together. That was clear when we lost our colleague, Sir David Amos. And I know your guidance and support for members then was greatly appreciated. It is a privilege to be in this House. Our democracy is powerful, and as we have witnessed, it can be definitive. But I know that this House will, true to its best traditions, hold the executive to account. And I know that Mr Speaker-elect will facilitate that. So in conclusion, Mr Speaker-elect, I have no doubt that we will face difficult days together in this place. But I also know that I speak for the whole House when I say that we will all welcome your leadership and guidance in the months and years ahead. Yeah. 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 I call the